Father, we thank you. We truly appreciate, bless and glorify your name. Thank you for the opportunity to be in your presence tonight. Please speak to us, O oh Lord, and help us all to be able to think right and to think positively. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Let that amen be perfect. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I hope your week has been eventful so far. Amen. And I hope you've not seen too much of Lagos traffic. <laughs> the traffic has been awesome these last few days. I think you need to pray in the morning concerning the traffic. Well, I guess... It will work itself out over time. Amen. Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. Reading from verse 11. Luke chapter 15. Reading from verse 11. Said, a certain man, a certain man, meaning this could have been anybody, had two sons. Had two sons. Very, very serious scripture. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living, all that he had worked for. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. A far country. And there... He wasted his substance with riotous, riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land. And after a while, he began to be in want. And then he went and tried to help himself and got a job with a citizen of that country. And that citizen sent him into the fields to feed swine. Very, very demeaning job. It was like almost collecting sewage. And would have even tried to fill his belly. So the man even wasn't paying him well. With the husks that the swine did eat. And no man even gave him husks to eat. And when he came to himself... When he came to himself. When he came to himself. Life is extremely dangerous. And a lot of us might live a very unproductive life without realizing it. There are many people tonight... And today, who are going through unnecessary pain and problem for one reason or the other. And they don't actually realize that they don't really need to be in that problem. A lot of our problems and challenges, when you look at it, is sometimes self inflicted usually based in a situation of limited information or knowledge you buy a big house you covet the house you don't think through how you are going to pay the mortgage and how you are going to maintain the house and after a season there's a struggle between you and the house when all you needed to do was to give up the house, reduce your expenditure, and start life again. Or you buy a big car. Or you promise yourself a fabulous wedding. Or you go into things and transactions that you don't need to get yourself involved in. Or sometimes, very typical, is getting into marriage. A lot of people, especially ladies, when they start to get to a certain age 
are anxious to get into marriage. Marriage they didn't need to get into in the first place. They go into that marriage or that relationship and after a while, the relationship becomes unbearable. Something you went into by yourself suddenly becomes totally unbearable. The Bible says that for many, many months, this man was struggling with pigs over food. He was suffering. He was in pain. He was in trouble. He was in sorrow. And then all of a sudden, one day, he came to himself. I want you to study that scripture for a few minutes. And I want you to give me certain things that the young man did wrong. Or certain things that people do wrong in their lives that they do not realize when they're doing those things that they are probably not in their right minds. Can you give me a few from that scripture? What were the things that this young man did that was reflective of an inappropriate mind, a mind that was not quite together? Anybody can give me an example. There are about six or seven of them in that scripture that led him to a state of penury and poverty that was not that was not necessary a lot of us are in states of poverty and penury and lack that are totally unnecessary i told the story a few, i think yesterday or a few days ago of a young man in this church my friend who i had been looking after for many years first of all i was looking after him not because he didn't come from a decent background, but because he spent a lot of his energy and time drinking and associating with wrong people. Today, he has a liver problem, a liver problem that could have been prevented if he had not insisted on drinking at a young age. Then, one day we did a transaction together we made about 2.5 million, myself and himself, and we decided to split the money two ways. Now, this is a guy I've been giving pocket money for many years and looking after. So I said to him, give me your share of the money. If I, what I really should have done is that if I'm taking that money because you need to pay me back for all that I've been using to look after you for the past 10 years. But I was a very nice guy. I said, don't worry. Give me your share of the money. Let me look after it for you. And as you need it, I will give it to you. He refused. He says, he's a man. I'm a man. He has made money. I have made money. I should give him his money. He should go and manage his money. He said, he can manage his money by himself. I said, you can't manage this money. Let me manage it for you. My thinking was that every month... I'll be giving him like 20 or 30,000, let him be enjoying life. I wasn't going to stop my allowance. On top of the allowance I was giving him, maybe even the money will earn some interest. And I'll be giving him the interest every month. And he'll be living a better life. He said, no. He wanted his money. He was going to trade, buy and sell, make a lot of money. I said, okay, no problem. I cut him his check. He went away. He went away for about four or five months. I didn't see him. I didn't stop his allowance. His allowance kept on going every month. I didn't stop it. Four or five months, I didn't see him. In the fifth or sixth month, he came back. I expected that he was going to come back and show me a very serious and significant bank account. This same guy, I was a year and a half before, I had given him about 500000 to trade. <laughs> he woke up one day and said they had stolen all the 500000 <laughs> I can never forget. Okay, anyway, I thought he would come back with a sack of money or a big bank account and tell me that he had multiplied the money and made me look stupid for wanting to keep his money. 
He came back and said, I should lend him 5,000 naira. I said, I should lend you 5,000 naira. I said, what happened to 1.2 million? What happened to 1.2 million in five months? What happened to 1.2 million in five months? So, I won't tell you what he did with 1.2 million. I won't tell you. Eh? Eh? You know what he did with it. <laughs> Life. You know, the Bible says that God gives bread to the eater and seed to the sower. He gives you the same. You decide what it is in your hand. Whether it is bread that you eat or whether it is seed that you sow. Can somebody hear what I'm saying? You would have an opportunity with God to do some great things. How you manage that opportunity is totally up to you. There's nobody in life that doesn't get opportunity. This guy got 1.2 million naira. Somebody said to me recently that she started business with 250,000. Bought, sold, bought, sold, bought, sold, bought, sold. Now I am sure she's a multimillionaire. But she started business with 250,000. You can start business with anything. Anything. And if you are consistent, you are frugal, you are focused, you are consistent, you are frugal, you are focused, the business can become anything. The whole of Dangote started with 500,000. They didn't tell me, I knew. The whole of Dangote started with 500,000 naira. My accounting practice started with zero. I had nothing, just my brain. And I started going from office to office, shop to shop, party to party, begging people to use my accounting services. So when people come to look at me today and they think that I come from a background of privilege and that silver spoon was given to me, no, I started life in Lagos sleeping on the floor in Luth. I was sleeping on the floor in Luth for three good months. I couldn't afford accommodation. When I moved from the floor in Luth, I moved to a friend's apartment in Yaba, and I was sharing his bed with him for another three years. It took me three years of pain and struggle in Lagos before I could rent my first apartment. And that apartment, I lived in it for 27 years. 27 years, no movement, no change. Life is struggle! And you must be ready to struggle. Anybody who sees anybody that has money, somebody paid the price. Can somebody hear what I'm saying? Somebody paid the price. So when I see young people struggling over inheritance, I want to kick them in the bum bum. Kick them in the bum bum. Why are you struggling over what you didn't work, of, work for? Why are you struggling over what you didn't work for? You see, this world, for those who don't speak Yoruba, Yoruba says that the person who saw somebody, something on the streets and picked it up and said running with it and holding it, say, how can he be so crazy and be running with something he picked up on the streets? Say, what about the person who lost it? Says we met it in the world. We will leave it in the world. Amen. Are you listening to me tonight? So what were the things that this young boy did that made us realize that mal à la tête, according to the French people? Number one. Who can tell me? Study it is in the scripture. You see, you need to read the Bible so that you can educate yourself. So that you can know right from wrong. The only measure of right from wrong is the Bible. Nothing else is right or wrong except it's in the word of God. So what are the things he did? Number one, he was challenging his father. When you are challenging the authority of your parents, regardless of what they are, there is something wrong with you. 
no matter how good or bad your father or your mother is, don't challenge them. The best you can do is to run away and go and hide. The day my mother was angry with my dad, and I said to my mother, Mom, you cannot talk to my father like that. <laughs> I was speaking Queen's English. My mother was in her bedroom. She was undressing. She took off her top, and she called me by my Yoruba name, Olajide Ayembi by Lobami. You met me in this world. Timba Shekwe Fwe. I can never forget that day. I say Kweke. Mokomba Ishireni. Mokomba Ishireni now. I'm just playing with you. Ah, Ekwe. Ora Wili Te Ora Ekwe. Ah. And I was born again and I knew the power in the parents' mouth. Ekwe. Ah. Ekwe. Ah. Ekwe. Ah. Ekwe. Ah. Ekwe. Ah. I just knelt down, held her by the leg. I said, Mommy, I'm sorry for me. Mommy, breast me. Ah, Ekwe. Long, long. Ah, okay. I said, Daddy, you're your own. <laughs> I said, Daddy, fight your own battle. I tried. <laughs> I tried. I tried. <laughs> I tried, oh, Jerry. <laughs> That's why I said, call him Jerry, man. I said, Jerry, man, you're your own. Oh. Go and meet your wife. We will over London, oh. I wasn't there. I'm just a byproduct of your love. I said, just let me cover my own head. Ah. Allah <laughs> Jide. So the issue wasn't whether she was right or wrong. The issue was that I was going to cover my head. Since that day, I never spoke fee until the day she died. I just go to Ibadan. I cross my leg. No problem. No problem. Well, all I know is that I'm going back to Lagos in another hour. Anything you want for me, I will do. No quarrel, no quarrel. If you contend with your parents, malalatet. It doesn't matter. I see some children saying that my father is this, my mother is this, my aunt is this. I will deal. With me. Ah, you haven't met for like a week before. Number two, if you have a feeling of entitlement, lots of people, I see them even in church, you have a feeling of entitlement. I was trying to help some people the other day, pay school fees, pay school fees, pay school fees. They came, they need more school fees, more school fees. Ken was telling them, or was it Jolomi, that you know what, there is no money. We can't pay these school fees. We've been paying for the last three years. They said, how can you tell us that? Is this your money? You don't teach us money. What's your own there? <laughs> then they said, if I cost, I said, ah, what is the problem? I'm the one giving you money. Somebody is helping me give money. Why are you fighting the person? A lot of people have a feeling of entitlement. What are you entitled to? You are not entitled to anything. Everything you get is by the grace of God, including the breath that you breathe. That's your starting point in life. Everything you get is by the grace of God. If you have, you thank God. If you don't have, you make your way. The person that has no heart, that is complaining that he has no heart, what about the person that has no head? What do you want him to say? That's why I told them yesterday where I spoke, Four places you must go to in life. Go to the prison. You understand the benefit of freedom. Go to the hospital. You understand the benefit of good health. Go to the mortuary. You understand the benefit of being alive. Go to the graveyard. You find where you will end up. You will find where you will end up. How much land does a man need? So all the big houses, all the marble, all the this, all the that is headache for your children. Actually, children of nowadays, you know, some people build house in Lagos, build house in Benin, build house in Wari, 
build house in the village, build house everywhere. The families, parents today who have 25 houses all over Lagos. When they die, it becomes a problem for their parents and their children, I beg your pardon. Number three, if you are asking and demanding for your inheritance before your time, there's something wrong with you. Greedy, envious, fighting. If you are far from God, the Bible says that the young man took his living and he went far away from the presence of his father. If you are living a riotous life, and this is for the average Nigerian or the African. You know, the Yoruba people, when they were going to describe the Yoruba race, they said a tribe of Yoruba-speaking people in the west coast of Africa who are, uh, who are desirous of enjoyment and good living. That's how they describe them. That's how most people can wake up at 6 a.m., go to a wedding. They'll be in the wedding from 7, and they'll be there till 12 midnight. A lot of people in Nigeria, that's how they are. They spend two hours making up. This is what the women do these days, professional. They, 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 they fly their makeup artists with them everywhere they're going. When they're going for a function. Tell me, am I lying? You people fly your makeup artists. I've seen it before. <laughs> you see, once I see one girl with a funny bag, I know she's makeup artist. She has one funny square bag like this. Makeup, two hours. Well, who are you trying to impress? Who are you trying to impress? Like my friend showed me the picture of his fiance. He said, Pastor, that's the party face. <laughs> that's her party face. What does that mean? What is wrong with the way you look? The way God created you? What is wrong with it? Why are you dissatisfied with it? Why are you deceiving people with your makeup and makedown? Why are you deceiving people? You know, there's some people who can't step out without makeup. It's become so bad. It's an epidemic. They make up even to sleep. Because the husband now doesn't know who his wife really is. <laughs> they make up to sleep. They make up to sleep. Sometimes I don't recognize people, though. When I see them on Saturday at the party, then I see them on Monday at the office, I'm not sure it's the same person. I keep looking. So when people say that I didn't recognize them, forgive me. Riotous living, drinking, enjoying, dancing, rocking, partying. People like to party. On Monday morning, 7 a.m., call a party in Lagos. People will attend. 7 a.m. Even if you make it 6 a.m. Say party while they go, people will come. You have no problem with that. They will come. And they will take every assurance you ask them to take. They will take it. In fact, there's some people, if they don't do assurance B, they can't go to party. They start feeling strange. Ah, color will normal. You know, <laughs> color, what's the color? You know, I went to somewhere, I was, I just wore what I wore. When I got there, everywhere was blue. I said, ah, what's going on? I said, didn't you read the invitation? We chose color. I said, hey, you chose color. Me, I don't even read those invitations. I don't read them. I don't understand what you mean. Ta, ta, color, Tagenta versus Burgundy. Burgundy and pink baby champagne gold. Soft lily, liver lilac. Stone cry lilac. Heaven must open germane green. Turquoise, rich from the valleys of the Nile. Say, you have nothing better to do. Onion pink. Eh? I told me, you are the expert. Oh, Mokini. Tomero for dead go. And when you are in the world, you need. This is what it is. Riotous living. It means you are not quite in your right mind. The battlefield of life is in the mind. If you have that kind of attitude, you will tend to poverty eventually. You will tend to poverty eventually. So the question this morning is, or this evening is, how do you get yourself back into your right mind? What are the things that you need to do to get yourself back to your right mind and to begin to think appropriately? Anybody? You know, the madman of Gadara, he was mad and crazy. 
crazy because he was not in his right mind. So there are many, many things that we do that when you look at that person, you say that that person is not quite okay. You know, in those days, I used to be very, very judgmental of people. Judgmental. Ah, this is bad behavior. This is not good behavior. This is bad behavior. This is not good behavior. This is not acceptable. But these days, I'm less judgmental because I realize that the mind is not okay. The mind is not okay. Something wrong with the mind. It's not the person's fault. It's the way they think. The people who have been doing the same thing the same way since 1968. The same thing the same way since 1968. The same attitude, going through the same problems, going through the same challenges, making the same mistakes, suffering the same way, having the having challenges of life, the same way they keep doing the thing, the same way. I see a lot of my friends now, most of them are almost 60. What we used to do at 18, they're still doing it the same way. Still doing it the same way. Still doing it the same way. That means that that thing never leaves them and they cannot stop thinking or behaving that same way. There's something wrong with the mind. And unless you conquer that mind and change that mind and reset that mind, they are going nowhere at a fast pace. Nowhere. There's nothing anybody can do except you change the mind. Change the way they think. You think Donald Trump can change? He cannot change. He's been behaving the same way since he was 18. Same lies in his business. Same arrogance in his business. Same, he's never really run anything successfully. Everything Bobo, up and down. bobo himself to the White House. The same thinking. Tell him I said so. He bobo himself to the White House. It's all gas. There's no substance. Nothing. Make believe. Abakadraba. Drama. He walked into an America that was waiting for a dramatist. And he began to become the president of America. That's how some people are. They bobo their way through life. They have nothing. I had a friend. He's still doing the same thing. He was chasing one girl. The girl came from London. Lovely girl. Nice girl. To be honest, it's me. They say I should go and chase that girl. But because I knew I had no tata for Yaya, I said, let me mind myself. So I said, I'm not going. Say about pastor. No, I wasn't pastor then. It was you can go, go, go. I said, I'm not going. I said, this guy will disgrace me. I'm not going. No, me. I know myself. So I didn't go. So this boy, more useless than me. This boy that will bring taxi to my house, I'll be the one to pay his taxi fee. This boy that I'll be borrowing money to eat gala. This boy, he said he's going to chase her. I said, me, I'm richer than you. I'm not going. You, you are going. He said, you're going. I said, you can't make it. Say said, ah, you will make it. I said, how? You're a useless boy. He bubbled his way into the poor girl's heart. When she went to meet the girl, the girl looked at him up and down. Say, you this boy, they say you're a useless boy. You this boy, they say you have no money. You this boy, they say you don't keep time. You this boy, they say you have not cultured. You this boy, they say you don't know how to treat a lady. Say, hey, they told you all that about me. Say, don't mind Lagos people, they're just jealous. I will tell them that they are stupid people. So after about six months, he got the girl. And after about nine months, he abandoned her. So I called him. I said, oh boy, how you behave like that now? Ah, how you get that girl? How you get her? He said, ah, you people won't spoil me. So I tell them, I tell the girl, say, me, I know how to treat lady. He said, I carry him, go every restaurant for Lagos. He said, I borrow money, I carry him. Every restaurant for Lagos, I carry him. And the girl said, but they said you don't know how to treat the lady. Say, don't mind them. Bagatelle, we go. This one, we go. They say, you don't keep to time. Say, oh boy, if you tell me I come for six, I go tanda for in the mall for 5.30. I go tanda. Five minutes to six, I go ring the bell. They say, ah, you're punctual. I say, you see, they want people. They say, I'm not punctual. He bubbled her for three months. Bubbled her. One day she said she wanted to go to Benin. He found a ticket, gave it to her. Said, you are going to Benin this morning. Said, by 6.30, I'll be with you in Benin. Says, how? Oh. Said, don't worry, I'll find my way. Said, as I bought for Ikeja, I faced Moto Park. I run go Benin. <laughs> I got to Benin at 5.15. I go to Tanda for one booker. Wait in front of the house. 
at exactly five minutes to six, I press in bed again. Give him flour. Ah, he just melts. <laughs> Today he's still boboing himself. <laughs> still boboing Lagos. What do you need to do to get to your right mind? Number one, who can help me? Who can help me? Right mind. How do you make sure a person gets to their right mind? How do you make sure that as a lady, you can take the right decisions, you can decide between the right and the wrong man, you can decide between the right and the wrong job, you can decide between the right and the wrong career, you can decide between the right and the wrong friends. How do you show as a man that you can take the right business decisions, you can associate with the right kind of people, you can have the right kind of relationship with your God, you can have a peaceful and balanced life. How do you ensure that your mind is right. Number one, you must realize and agree that your present thinking is wrong. You must realize and agree that your present thinking is wrong. A lot of people don't realize and they don't agree that the way that they are thinking is wrong. They think that everybody else is wrong and they are right. How can everybody else be wrong and you alone be right? That's the spirit of blaming others. You blame 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 others for everything. Everybody can't be wrong. And you are right. The Bible says he came to himself. He realized that what he had been doing was wrong. A lot of people will keep struggling with the swine. You spend your life struggling with the swine and say it's the swine that eats your food. It's the man that makes you walk with swine. It's your father that didn't give you enough to spend on righteous living. You keep blaming others for their own mistakes. Most of the time, what you are going through is because of your own thinking. It's because of your own mistakes. It's because of your own inappropriate behavior. It's because of your own wrong response to situations. It has nothing to do with anybody because the world is constant. There will always be the good, the bad, the ugly in the world. There will always be time and chance. There will always be the opportunity. It is how you react to these things that will determine what you become. You must come to the right mind. The Bible says that Jesus said to the man by the pool of Bethesda, Arise, take up your bed, walk. Stop waiting for somebody to help you. Arise, take up your bed, walk. Stop waiting for government to help you. Arise, take up your bed, walk. Stop waiting for Pastor Itwa to help you. Arise, take up your bed, walk. Stop waiting for other people to sort you out. Get into your own right mind. Number two, run to Jesus. Run to Jesus and cry unto Jesus and say, what's the matter with me, Jesus? Examine me and do something about it. Examine my rising up and my sitting down, my standing up and my lying down. Examine me, Jesus, and do something about my mind. Run to Jesus and admit to God that you have a problem. That you have a challenge. Stop blaming God for your own situation. Go to God and say, God, I have a problem. The Bible says the madman of Gadara ran to Jesus. And said to Jesus, 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 what have you got to do with me? Thou son of the most high God. I judge you, Jesus. Don't deal with me for my mistakes, but have mercy upon me for my inabilities and inadequacies. I judge thee, thou torment me not. Blind Bartimaeus said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. Change my thinking. In the first place, Jesus can give it back. Remember the story of a certain man who had made many, many mistakes in his life, had a lot of problems everywhere, challenges here and there, became born again, ran to Jesus, gave his life to Jesus Christ. They prayed a massive prayer for him and he fell asleep. That night while he slept, he had a dream. And in the midst of his dream, a tall, big, huge man came into where he was, opened up his skull, rearranged his brain, and then closed the skull back. By the time he woke up, he was thinking differently. And he began to go into a new phase of his life. A lot of thing. Take that thing. Take that thing. Steal that thing. Deal with that thing. Then after a while, they begin to tell a lie. It's a young man I'm looking after. If I tell you his name, 
you know, he comes from very, very privileged background. Mother abandoned him. Father doesn't care about him, but I've been looking after him. I keep him an allowance every month. Just come to, just come, just come. Let me be seeing you. Let me be praying for you. So the other time I traveled, and I wasn't available to give him his usual allowance. So he went to my secretary. The secretary couldn't give him the allowance or give him less than I would have given him. And then he went to the office reception. He looked here, looked there, saw a phone there, grabbed it, and ran away with somebody else's phone. I said, what do you mean by that? What sort of evil thought is in you that you want to deprive another of his phone just because they couldn't give you your full allowance? What kind of thought is that? It is the evil inside, the demon inside that overwhelmed this guy. He just took the phone and ran away. Went and pawned the phone. Took some money. Couldn't have gotten more than 6,000 naira for that phone. Maybe 10,000. And from that day till today, he's not been able to come back and look for me. Can't come back to the office. Can't come back to my environment. Because something inside him drove him into the wilderness. A lot of us have thoughts like that. That drive us into the wilderness of life. The Bible says you must be filled with the spirit of God. And have a positive spirit that helps your thinking. And every negative thought that draws you back on the ladder of life must be brought back. Number four. You must learn new things. You must learn new things. You must read far, read wide, receive new information, listen to motivational messages, travel wide, be exposed. I was speaking to a friend of mine today and we're barely aching about Nigeria and he was talking about the caliber of people that are leading us in Nigeria and his conclusion is that some people went to school but they're not educated. Some people went to school, but they are not educated. You must learn new things all the time. You must read a book. You must watch some biography. You must learn far and wide. You must listen to information. You must get new information. A lot of people, their minds are closed. Their minds are closed. Especially some spiritual leaders. Once they know a bit of Bible, one or two miracles, they think that they are right all the time. They are not ready to learn new things. You must be ready to learn. You must be ready to learn. You must be ready to listen. You must be ready to absorb. You must be ready to expand your mind. Expand your course. Today, a friend of mine, member of this church, he hasn't come for a long time. He called me all of a sudden to commiserate on the loss of one of our Mrs. Fisher. He was commiserating. So I said, where have you been? He says, Pastor... I was struggling in church. You kept on giving me money. I had to go out to go and learn some new things. To go and learn how people operate in the world. To go and learn how people survive. Say, people of us in the church, we think it's only the Bible we need to read. Only the Bible we need to stick to. No, says the people of the world, they learn far away. I went to learn how to survive in the world. I was tired of getting hangouts from you. I went to learn. So I said, hey, you went to learn. I said, what did you learn? What did you learn? Tell me what you learned. Inform me. Educate me. Tell me. Let me know what you learned. So he started telling me, this is what I learned. This is what I learned. And I was absorbing into my brain, into my mind, what he learned. I could have said to myself, I'm his pastor. I should know everything. No. I said, what did you learn? Maybe I can learn one or two more things from what you learned. What did you learn? What did you learn? He spoke and spoke and spoke until his credit finished. That's when I remember that he called me. I didn't call him. So I called him back. I said, keep telling me what you learned. You must be open to information. You know, one of our presidents in Nigeria, they say by force, by two last, he must be president. It was when, we be, when, he was, when he was almost president that we discovered that he had never seen a dimmer switch in his life. Dimmer switch. You know dimmer switch? Eh? Dimmer switch. Do you know dimmer switch? Abi, and you know more dimmer switch? Eh? This thing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He'd never been to London before. You know, the day Olu went to London and saw underground, Olu was running. Okay, ah, a more. Underground. <laughs> what was Olu saying? He said, Me too, I was running. <laughs> underground, they started building 100 years ago. 
underground. In London, where people travel under the ground. You are here now. People are traveling under you. 150, you see now. Eluna is talking German Street. <laughs> How the market, Olu? <laughs> How market? <laughs> you are laughing. You are London, really. He had never traveled before. How is he going to lead us? Never seen Dima Street before. How is he going to lead us? When they start talking economics and the dynamics of world trade and the movement of shares and this, the way IFC works, the way World Bank works, how is he going to respond? You know what changed Singapore? This man, Lee Kuan Yew, went to London, went to Oxford, saw a new country. Left the village life in Singapore. Went into the urban life of UK. His mind opened. He says, if this can work in Oxford, he should be able to work in Singapore. We have a lot of leaders in Nigeria. They travel, but they don't see. They go around, but they don't see. They talk to people, but they don't see. You saw some pictures they posted now. The people were meeting with Japanese. The people from House of Representatives were there. They were just there crossing their legs, looking. They were not prepared for the meeting. They travel, but they don't see. They go to Dubai. They go everywhere, but they don't see. They go and enjoy in those countries. Spend extra code, but they don't see. The owner or the manager or the king of Dubai says, my vision says, I have a vision for Dubai. I can see Dubai a hundred years time when I won't be around. You must learn new things all the time. You must receive it. You must absorb it. You must think about it. You must understand it. You must brood on it. You must learn from your experiences. Instead of crying and being paid all the time, you must learn from your experiences. You must learn from what you are going through. You must enlarge your coast. So that your thinking can change. And then number five, you must think ahead. You must think ahead. Every situation in life, you must think ahead. When you are in this situation now, you must think ahead. How is this thing going to end? What am I going to do? How am I going to get out of it? When I get out of it, what am I going to do? You must think ahead. You know the problem with people? They look into their problem. They look into their situation. The Bible says that Jesus said to Peter, come out and walk on the water. Come out and walk on the water. Come out and walk on the water. And when he came out and he was thinking ahead and looking at Jesus, he was walking on the water. The minute he looked at the waves, he went inside. If you are going to think, you must think ahead. Ted Turner says, life is like a game of chess. Anybody that plays chess with a warm move player knows that you beat him all the time. But if you are playing with a chess player, you must think 10, 5, 10 steps ahead all the time. If you are going to think, you must think ahead. Ephesians chapter 5 says, everything will soon come to an end and you must think ahead. Process it, imagine it, think ahead, think positively. Know that sometimes this thing is going to come to pass. Affliction is just for a little while. He says, in the morning, there will be a morning of joy. You must change your thinking. You must determine in your mind that you will succeed. You must determine in your mind that this thing is not to drown you. You must determine in your mind that you must get out of the situation. You must determine in your mind that this thing will not last forever. You must determine in your mind that God is making a new way for you. Joseph said in prison, I am not supposed to be here. I am thinking ahead. You must think ahead all the time. Don't drown yourself in your sorrow and in your situation. Don't drown yourself in your problems. Don't drown yourself in your issues. Don't drown yourself in your limitation. Know that it will come, it will pass, and you'll still be alive. You must think ahead. People are too negative in their thinking. Thinking that they can never succeed. Thinking that they can never excel. Thinking that it's overwhelming them. Thinking that somebody else has to help them. But you must think, I, your help starts with your thinking. Stand up on your feet. Lift up your voice God, and say, Father, I can't hear you. Father, I can't hear you. Father, every negative thought in my heart, in my mind, I command that thought now to get out in the name of Jesus.